In mid-October, Victorian Greens leader Greg Barber accused the Napthine government of fudging train numbers to hide overcrowding in Melbourne trains. Under the Freedom of Information Act, he obtained the actual data from Public Transit Victoria. Media outlets were quick to pick up the story, but no one outside of PTV looked at all of the raw numbers. Let's slow down and see what the numbers reveal. The complete data set showed that the PTV report had excluded 346 late trains, amounting to about a quarter of a million passengers. The report also did not discuss particular issues, like the late trains that it excluded, the overcrowding in eastern trains, and the fact that passengers riding through poor suburbs were more likely to be on an overcrowded train. Twice a year, PTV counts the passenger loads of trains. They count all passengers traveling in and out of Jolimont, North Melbourne, and Richmond stations. Their report discusses peak traffic, which includes inbound passengers between 7 and 9.30 in the morning, and outbound from 3.30 to 7 in the evening. Cancelled and delayed trains are excluded from the final report. For example, PTV included the 331 upfield train carrying 313 passengers that was 7 minutes late, but excluded a 612 evening train that was 3 minutes late but carrying 1,024 passengers. In actual fact, of the 2,200 peak hour trains, 34 were cancelled and 346 were excluded. PTV claims the exclusions do not make an impact on the overall figures because they also exclude the trains that arrive immediately after late trains. These services often have low numbers. And the difference between PTV's average and the actual average was minimal. The overall average was 570 people per train, compared with PTV's average of 564 passengers. And including all the trains brings a number of overcrowded services from 64 to 72. Not a big difference. When discussing the number of crowded trains, the report did not discuss the number of late or canceled trains. Although on average trains were only one minute late, there were still 459 trains that were more than three minutes late and 138 trains that were more than six minutes late, as well as 32 trains that were canceled. So for instance, when all the trains are counted, Lilydale had the highest number of trains arriving later than three minutes, 85, and Belgrave, with 50 trains, had the second highest. The Ringwood Corridor had an average of 52 trains excluded due to such delays and cancellations. What about PTV's second measure, the proportion of people who have to ride on overcrowded trains? The averages are not very different, but when you look at each and every train over the four days, more than 300,000 were on an overcrowded train. That's one out of every four passengers. On some lines, like Werribee, it was nearly one in two. This map shows the socioeconomic status of the postcodes of each train station. Green stations are the wealthiest, yellow in the middle, and red are the most poor. The lines that were users were most likely to be over on an overcrowded train were Werribee, Packingham, Craigieburn, and Sunbury. PTV, for its part, believes that both its data collection and its analysis techniques are robust. It stated that the exclusions are justified and results provide an accurate picture of how the Metropolitan Rail Network performs. This brief analysis of the full data set shows that while the average figures remain similar, there are still lessons to be learned about the number of overcrowded trains and the people who ride them. The first lesson is that eastern trains are most likely to be late and overcrowded. The second is that if you are a passenger riding through less wealthy suburbs, you are more likely to be on an overcrowded train. The next train survey is being conducted this month. In the meanwhile, feel free to look at the links below to access the raw data, syntax, and spreadsheet used to calculate the numbers.